Hello, good morning or good afternoon, whatever the time is in your area. I greet you all. My name is Yemi I welcome you to my channel and uh, thank you for subscribing. If you have, if you have not, please do. I'm happy to see that people are subscribing, you know, consistently these days. So let us build this nation together. You have a voice, I have a voice. And by the time we team up together, we'll build our society for the better. And in the matter of the gospel, we that are Christians, we will preach the gospel of good news together. And through all these messages that we are passing across, we'll build our families and build our, our countries together. Now, I want to talk briefly about, but don't forget, please share these messages. We need it now, very urgently. Um, our Yoruba people are the people that I want to talk to now. I thank God that uh, there is a reawakening of our consciousness towards getting justice for our people. Therefore, Yoruba people, I commend you for all your efforts. Iba Ghani Adams, Shifsonde Iboho, Kishiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinumbu, Wali Shoyikas of this world, Papa Obasanjo, Papa Pisi Akande, and their brother here, Governor Fayemi, all the governors in the south, southern states, that make up of Yoruba nation. And then the social commentators, Sidia, Frank, Temperate, uh, Sister, um, uh, and Denika Omoga. <laughs> uh, Chief wrote to me, Adebuji, just which one day we will know you in person. <laughs> but you are making a lot of contributions towards Yoruba uh, emancipation, your own way. And uh, the youths in Yoruba land, the elders, the others, I know that your position now is uh, you are in a state of ho, oh, where do I belong? If I say yes to Nigeria, then I become a, a traitor to Nigeria. If I say yes to, so if I say yes to Yoruba nation, uh, my people will call me, they will. <laughs> I'm not safe in their hands. If I say yes to, to Nigeria, my people will say, they will call me names and they will challenge. In fact, they will question the authentic, authenticity of my Yoruba hood, if there's any language like that. <laughs> so, uh, all said and done. Every one of us, now we are divided into two. Those who are pro-Nigeria and those who are pro uh, Yoruba nation. Yes, there's no doubt about that. The only common thread that unites us together now is that we are Yoruba people. Yoruba people. Just as the Igbos. Our Igbo brothers are also, you, you know, we have a lot of factions in the Igbo struggle for Biafra. Of course, you know. But one common thread that joins them together is that they are Igbo people. That identity, that national identity. The same thing with us in Yoruba land. The same thing with our brothers in the northern states, Arawa people. We have all our differences and so on and so forth, but we are united by the way God has created us. I mean, the blood that made us up. Now, this struggle for Yoruba nation has been going on. But my observation is that the trend that is emerging now the trend that is emerging, emerging is a dangerous one, a very dangerous one. I did address um, some issues to, um, on this struggle for Yoruba nation the other day. I said, look, if all of us will be honest with ourselves, we remain one, regardless of our views. And nobody is wrong. I want to tell you, nobody is wrong. Those who are saying Yoruba nation should be or Yoruba state should be, they have their scientifically proven evidences, records, unarguable records, that is indisputable records of catastrophes that led to that decision and that aggravated their anger, you know, that defeated, in fact, that brought them to the level of their heat of passion, which they are expressing. So say, I mean, to die tent, oh Israel, it happened in the Bible. To die dead. Everybody goes to his own father's house. Is it the issue of uh, Fulani that we are talking about? I told you I was 
have been many times a victim of full and invasion, full and destruction of all that I labored for. So I did say that if anybody should be saying, let everybody go to where he comes from, I should be, if I should have my own Omoboyega faction or Omoboyega group that will be agitating from Ekiti here, I said, look, starting from Ekiti, that I don't want to see any full and near now. Then those of us who now say, okay, sorry, it's an issue. It's a national issue. Don't let us break. Let us solve them together. Take full an issue as an national issue. Let's agree on something that will keep them at bay. Let them be wherever they will take good care. They are in business. And they want, look, I was amazed when Dr. Fikari Defiani gave us a hint recently, which I can buttress by my interaction with the Fulanis themselves. They said uh, he built dairy, wherever it is in the land, I don't know. He said yes, and reported cows. He said yes. And he said, uh, what about the cows that were all over? He said, all the cows that you are bringing from Maiduku, Rishokoto to the south, to anywhere part of this Nigeria, that they cannot produce two liters of milk a day. Quality milk, not milk, not even quality, whether quality or quality. They cannot produce two liters of milk consistently a day. Whereas that the one he brought from abroad produces 24 point something liters of milk a day. To buttress his point, I was at my area, a Greek settlement one day. You know, in spite of all these uh, troubles, is it, I have a broad mind. I see Fulanis as my brother. I see Hausas as my brother. I see Igbos as my brother. I see anybody because we are all creation of God. We are all children of God. Forget about religion. We are all one. We are all a people. A people. Seven point something billion population of people in this world today, they are one family. But things that are separating us are forces that, you know, are somehow beyond us. Now, I spoke with one day, when I wanted to harvest my maize in that agreed settlement uh, at the farm in uh, Erio Ikiti, I invited these my fellow brothers, the Fulanis. I said, come, because they've been going around, you know, they, they were grazing around the farm and we had understanding that they won't destroy my farm. They did not, in fairness to them. So the day of harvesting, then I invited them. I said, come, we are going to do this work together. You, you need the, <laughs> the shafts. Me, I need the maize. Now we're going to do it together. You are going to help me to harvest the maize and gather them in one place. After harvesting those ones, your cows can eat all the shafts. Then I say, secondly, we're going to peel the maize as they were bringing them and we're going to peel the maize. You still have ownership of the peels, the covers of this maize. And we agreed. I bought food, we ate together, we did everything together, work started. That was how we did that work. So during the course of that work, we're not talking. I said, ah, this is your cow, my brothers. How are you enjoying it? Are you really making so money, much money from it? He said, Daddy, don't let me deceive you. We are only suffering. We are just laboring in vain. That imagine all these bushes that we comb all over the place from north to south. That by the time we sell our cows, apart from the wastages that would have happened, huge wastages. Many of these animals will die on the way. Many of them are diseased. Many of them are caught by traps. Many of them are attacked. Many of them, you know, waste. I mean, the, 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 the wastages that, apart from that, even by the time you now sell what is left as the remnants, that you cannot even feed yourself. I shed tears inside of me that day. That's so. Like the Bible says, the troubles that people, people in the world are experiencing is the same trouble that you, people that would think you are making money and all that, you are experiencing. So this economy does not even favor you too. They said, yes, that, that we are just laboring in vain. These are, these are human beings. We are talking about, apart from the AK, property seven carriers, all these, uh, all these um, um, what do you call them, thugs or bandits who camouflage as headers. Apart from them, these our brothers, full of this, they are average human beings like us. They reason like us, they analyze like us, they do things like us. I'm not talking of the bandits, like I'm saying. I'm talking of average Hausa or Fulani people. Average Nigerian, to some extent, but be you people outside Europe or anywhere. We all know the common problems that we have. The malu they are selling, the cows they are selling, is not profitable to them. That's why they are looking for anything to feed them. And unfortunately, matters making them to steal and <laughs> making the cows to steal and destroy them, they, they themselves don't gain anything from it. So, food for thought. Now, okay, we Yoruba people, come on. This is where I'm going. We haven't succeeded yet. We have not separated yet. We are not even united as a body. Unity does not mean that we should all agree that we should succeed or we should not succeed. 
we should respect one another's view. We should be one. I mean, whether we are pro or anti, Yoruba state, we should still see ourselves as Yoruba people, Yoruba nation. Like I said, it is not the creation of the law, it is the creation of God that created the Yoruba nation, that created the Yoruba nation, that created the Yoruba nation, that created the Yoruba nation. It's not. So that identity alone is enough for us to remember that, you know, Yoruba people ought not to tow the path of destruction. You say you want Yoruba state. Ghani Adams and uh, Bola Tinubu, they are not seeing eye to eye. Oba Sonjo and uh, Professor Walisho Yeka, <laughs> even though they are from the same compound, let me put it that way. They don't see eye to eye. In the days of Akita Land, later Akita Land, later Chiba Ola, later Chiba Ola, later Chiba Ola, we were talking of betrayals. The crisis rocked Yoruba nation. That, well, thank God, there are still remnants. We are at least, there is healing now. At least, I'm sure that the grandchildren or great grandchildren of Beta Ola and Leta Akita can now relate together. But the betrayal or the problem of that time affected us as a, divided us as a nation. Now, the others, they are in dilemma. Many of us have accused them of many things. Some can be proved, some cannot be proved. That's why I love um, Governor Fayoshi. Much as he waged wars against Fulani, uh, destruction of or evasion of the divine, he made laws, he did everything. He still said, Look, I'm a head out. I have cows. We are told that many of these cows are owned by our Obas. They are owned by our chiefs. They are owned by our politicians. We are making noise. The cows should leave our farms. Whereas what we should be looking at is let everybody come out. I own cows like five or six. for my cows, they don't go out after six p.m. and they have the roots that they fly. That's that's the typical, honest way of doing things. He's a leader. He said, "I am part. I'm, I have own cows." How many of our others came up to see that? And many others today, of course, they are trying to protect their seats. If they open up, they say. But nobody will kill any of us for doing it. All we say of us should do is of us should help us to find a solution to how these cows can feed without destroying other people's businesses, farmlands. That is one. Note. So of us and uh, Sunday go home, Ghani Adams. Okay, who is left? And every one of them, every one of you Yoruba leaders, you have your followers. Look at my very dear sister, Venika Mugad, look at how. You know how uh, how committed, even as a woman, she is to the cause of Yoruba land, Yoruba nation. She's applying everything she womanly and humanly can apply. You know, sometimes I have to say, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> relax, my dear sister. We shall get to wherever we are going, but we don't need to, you know, be too. We don't. We don't need to. Uh, Destroy ourselves along the way, but we don't need to call ourselves names. Be temperate in everything you do. Just cool, calm, don't worry. Then, look at um, uh, Chief Roti Miyadebo G2. He has his own, the people that he followed among the leaders. Ghani Adams have their own followers. Tinubu have his own followers. Just like I now, we are talking of presidency. Look, I say, you see, one thing about life is don't be afraid to air your views. Let people know where you belong. It does not, and rational ones won't create any meeting as a result of that because we all have our choices to make. If you ask me today, for instance, if you want to choose your Uruguay presidency in 2023, by my own assessment, nobody is more qualified in terms of having been tested in politics. I'm not talking of human flaws. You can call anybody anything. You can even prove that he's what you call him or her. To me today, <clears throat> nobody is more qualified in Yoruba land to become the president of Nigeria that we know can deliver because he has delivered before. You may some people are saying, uh, uh, when they were there, they were team, they were this and that. <laughs> we will talk to them about that later. Where is the angel? <laughs> Tell people angel. So to rule your nation. When you can't find an angel in yourself, you can't find an angel in your own immediate family. You are not even an angel before your own children. You are your wife. The most qualified person to rule as a Yoruba man in Nigeria is number one, 
Bola Tinubu. That's why I cast my vote. Personally, I am his. On, I'm, I'm his notorious follower. Put it that way. <laughs> who, who is your own? Then followed by our um, vice president. You can see it yourself. He has not held position that has the whole country as his, his constituency. But within the short periods that he acted for President Buhari, we knew that there were people noticed significant, you know, improvement. They, they know that if this man is there, he can do it. <clears throat> then, uh, followed by Fashola, ex governor Fashola, he also proved his method when while in the anyone that can govern Lagos and govern Lagos and make a difference can govern Nigeria successfully. God helping him. Then followed by, by my own blood brother here, Governor, Governor Payem. I know cool, calm, well exposed, less of a noise, more of action. In fact, you ask me, I would say that this is a governor that we want to do everything but without being proclaimed. You know, it's not like the other ones that, you know, we want to make noise of everything. It's a leadership style. The person that makes noise, if you don't even make noise, people will not know what to do. And that is what Governor Payem suffered in the first term. Even this time around now, he's still towing the part of who he is, but it's a little bit coming out to say, okay, this is what we did, this is what we did, and by meeting with the people and all that. And this is, he is also eminently qualified to be Nigeria's president. That's why when people were, my brother Fayoshi also said he wanted to, yes, we all know he's the leader, can I call him pragmatic leader, but he's, you see, his temperament is just the issue. <laughs> Governor Fayoshi would have been, ex Governor Fayoshi would have been capable. But his, his temperament, he does not have control over his temperament. So because of that, that's why, you see, let me tell you, people may be hailing you, hey, this and that, we are closest friends. When it's time to tell the truth, come, they will tell it to your face. That's why his closest friend, Governor Wiki, told him then that, okay, we have reached the bridge, we have to cross it. My friend is not sellable as a president to Nigeria. <laughs> but, but this is a governor, a governor that delivered in the midst of nothing in the state. His efforts, you see, many people don't know. All these are the law that uh, Governor Fayoshi brought out and made proper publicity of had been initiated during the time of the first time of Governor Fayemi, but he did not make noise of it. And see what he what Fayemi did now. He headed the uh, he led the group that gave birth to Amoteku. Today we can see. And he's still very vocal now in ensuring that Amoteku works. Likewise, Governor Akeridumi. When you talk of people who have guts, people who tell the truth to the authority, Akeridumi and Fayemi, they are there. And not just Barawaje, who just 